Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the Labis Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Kit. It includes everything you see here and it allows you to play all your favorite retro games. We'll unbox it, set it up, and try it out. Let's get started. Before we unbox the kit, let's see what's included. You get a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with 4 gigs of RAM, a 5.1 volt 3 amp power supply with an on-off switch, one micro HDMI to HDMI cable, two joysticks, a 64 gigabyte Class 10 SanDisk micro SD card, a premium case, heat sinks, fan, and a screwdriver, and a quick start guide. Okay, let's go ahead and unbox the Labis Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Kit. This is the box. And on the back here, it shows you all the contents that's in the box. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and open it. Ah, what a nice arrangement here. Here's our Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigs of RAM. And we'll go ahead and take a closer look at the board real quick. Very nice. In this section here, it shows you the proper handling of the board. Basically, try not to touch any of the electronics, if you can avoid it. All right, so let's take a look at this. What's in this box? Here we have the case. There's the lavish case. That's a pretty cool design. Inside, you have some screws for mounting the fan and the Raspberry Pi to the case. Here's the micro SD slot opening, and there's a camera mount right here. And yes, you can mount a camera inside. There's the ports, there's some more ports, and we'll look at this closer in just a few. All right, let's see what's in this box. Here we have the unofficial power supply. It's a 5.1 volt, three amp with an on off switch. I say unofficial, it didn't come from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Here is the active cooling fan. Very cool. All right, let's see what else have we got. Here you have a micro SD reader, and this one's kind of interesting. It supports USB A as well as USB C, which is pretty interesting. And here we have the micro HDMI to HDMI cable for connecting your Raspberry Pi to your TV or monitor. And a little screwdriver. And the heat sinks, copper heat sinks. There's three of them. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And on the bottom here, we have the quick start guide, which is actually pretty good. The book looks really thick, but it's mostly because it's in multiple languages. But look here at the orientation of the fan. I always try and go by the manufacturer's recommendations there. All right, so let's take a look here at the controllers and get it out of the box. <laughs> here we go. Ah, it's pretty cool, actually. It's not bad. Uh, the only thing that I kind of have a problem with is the location of the select and start. That's kind of awkward. Um, otherwise, they feel okay. Um, I wouldn't say these are exactly premium controllers, but they're not bad, they just, uh, they don't have much weight to them. And here's our 64 gig micro SD card with noobs pre-installed for downloading Laka. I went on Amazon's website and checked out the price here, and as you can see, it's $149.99, and it's got very good reviews, so apparently a lot of people like it. However, I wanted to go ahead and check the prices of all these items and see what it comes out to, and it was $151.90. I tried to match the items as closely as I could, and I came out with $1.91 in savings, but they do have coupon codes, so check that out. Okay, so let's set up the Labis Raspberry Pi 4 Retro Gaming Kit. 
We'll start by taking a look at the Pi itself. This is your USB-C power, and you have two micro HDMI ports here. You have your AV output, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a gigabit Ethernet. This is where we are going to install the fans on the GPIO header pins. Off to the right here, we have your display port for an external display, a camera port, and if we flip it over, this is where your micro SD card goes. One thing I do want to mention is this kit was provided for review purposes. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the heat sinks. The larger square one goes to the CPU, the elongated one goes to the RAM, and the smaller of all of them goes to the USB controller. We'll just go ahead and affix the smaller one to the USB controller. I found it easier to use a toothpick to help remove the adhesive backing, uh, so that's something you may want to consider as well. Anyway, we'll affix the heatsink to the RAM chip, and now we'll do the same for the CPU. Like so. And just give it a nice little push, and there you go. Next, we'll install the Raspberry Pi 4 into the case. And you just want to make sure all the ports are lined up properly. And Yep, that looks pretty good. And once everything's lined up, go ahead and put the screws into the Pi itself. I used the darker ones here. And I used a different screwdriver because I prefer mine over the one that's included. Next, align the fan to the studs there on the case and go ahead and pop it in. And to secure it fully, you have to put in these screws, which I'm not particularly fond of. Other cases, you don't have to do that. They just snap in. But anyway, in this case, that's it. One thing I want to point out is there is a cutout for the Raspberry Pi camera. If you choose to install one, it is not included in this kit. But I want to make you aware that it's there. I'm going to show you two different ways of wiring up the fan. First, pin 6, put the brownish looking wire there, and for pin 2, put the red wire, and that will give you the best cooling option. Another option is, for quieter operation, you can move it to the pin number 1, and that will give it a quieter operation. So there you have it. After you do that, go ahead and pop the top of the case on. Again, we'll just double check all the ports look good, and they do. I also want to mention there is rubber backing on the bottom, which is pretty nice. We'll go ahead and plug in the USB-C power connector. And right next to it is where the HDMI, or micro HDMI connection goes, right next to the power. There you go. Good. All right, so now we'll go ahead and plug up the controller. And now we'll install the micro SD card. I'm not going to use the one that came with the kit. I'm going to use my 512 gigabyte micro SD card that has RetroPie and all my games already installed. That way I don't have to go through it all again. You will need a keyboard and possibly a mouse as well. This keyboard has a mouse that comes with it. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the USB 2.0 port. If you're not sure how to install RetroPie, I have a video just for that. It'll step you through the entire process, so you may want to check that out. Additionally, you may want to check out my 10 RetroPie tips for the Raspberry Pi 4. Lots of helpful information for you, so do check out those videos as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the Labus Retro Gaming Kit. All right, so now the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to boot directly into RetroPie. It's going into Emulation Station, and now we're going to set up the controller. So here we're going to press the A button, and then step through the D-pad buttons, then Start, Select, in the A, B, X, Y, the left shoulder, right shoulder, left trigger, right trigger, left thumb, that's the middle of the button, and the right thumb, and then the left analog up, down, left, right. In the right analog, up, down, left, and right. There we go. Hit select, and then press A. Okay, so now we are in RetroPie. 
and we can browse through our favorites, all our games, the different emulators, and we'll just pick PlayStation and play a little bit of Tekken 3. Round one, fight! <laughs> I'm not very good at it. <laughs> you win. All right, now let's move on to the Dreamcast emulator. We're going to play Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. This is using the Redream emulator. This was added as part of the 10 tips for RetroPod. And if you want to play Dreamcast, you're going to need analog sticks like the ones included in this kit. Just a little side note. Alright, so now let's go over the pros of this kit. It is a decent value, especially if you apply a coupon code, which I believe there's 10% off currently. It also includes dual analog sticks on each controller, which is a plus. It's got a camera mount case, which I like, and it includes a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Now we'll look at the things that I think could be improved. The controller cable length was 4 feet 8 inches, which I thought was unusually short. Uh, the fans also needed screws. Other cases I've reviewed, they just snap in without screws. And I thought the select and start button placement was not exactly ideal. So, that's the things that I personally feel can be improved. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Lavis Retro Gaming Kit. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.